How's it going, everyone? Brother Dave from Rod of Iron here, coming at you with another uh, little sermon I've prepared here. Uh, this one I, I, is going to be uh, a little different than some of my previous sermons. Um, I'm like today to do a, a little bit of a comparative analysis of uh, two false religions here, Islam and Atheism. Uh, now, you, some might say, well, atheism's not a religion, it's the lack of a religion. No, it, it is a religion in how they adhere to it, in how they set up their little popes and their little uh, figures that they look to, and it really is a religious belief system, and frankly, it's unscientific as all get out, <laughs> but uh, I digress, we'll get into that a little bit later. First, I'd like to talk about Islam. That's a false religion uh, that claims to be, you know, based off the Bible and just a continuation. Well, um, you know, the Bible says, uh, has a lot to say about that, uh, that type of religion. Open your Bibles, if you have one in front of you, to uh, the book of Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, uh, the Apostle Paul here writes... Uh, under inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 8 of Galatians chapter 1, the Bible reads, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Some pretty strong verbiage here. Uh, that Paul is using, uh, but it's absolutely appropriate. Of course, we know that because God wrote it, <laughs> and uh, God inspired it, and that makes it appropriate. Um, we, as Christians, as God's people, ought to have zero tolerance for any false gospel. Anything that corrupts... Uh, Salvation, such as a works-based salvation, which uh, practically every false religion in the world teaches, or whether uh, that would attack or, or contradict uh, the character and person of Jesus Christ that we see in the Holy Bible, his, his, whether it be his virgin birth, uh, the miracles that he did, his death, his, his resurrection, literal resurrection, physical resurrection that, that he achieved after death, or any of those aspects, really. Anything that contradicts that, Paul says we should let them be accursed. And interestingly enough here, in verse 8, you might have noticed, he says, But though we or an, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. Now, do I believe that angels come down from heaven and preach a false gospel? No. Did Paul believe that? No. But he's saying that. You know why? Because the Bible says uh, elsewhere in Corinthians that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So there are beings, there are spiritual beings that have revealed themselves to people and that who have claimed to be angels, but they are demons, they are devils, okay? And that's exactly what happened to the pedophile, the illiterate, disgusting pedophile freak reprobate who's frying in hell like a strip of bacon named Muhammad. Muhammad was an illiterate fool. He couldn't even read. And that's shameful. And someone could be that stupid that they wouldn't even know how to read. As an adult, as a grown man. And on top of that, he was a pedophile. He raped a nine-year-old girl when he was in his 50s. He married her when, he, when she was six years old. Her name was Aisha. And he raped her when she was nine years old. That is a disgusting, freak, degenerate dog. May he burn in hell 
forever and ever. Amen. But just imagine the foolishness of anyone who would follow that man in any way. Anyone who is that foolish deserves to have a, a leader and a false prophet who is that wicked and deplorable and detestable and repugnant and beyond the pale reprobate. But Muhammad, the illiterate pedophile, claimed that he was visited by the angel Gabriel, who strangled him and uh, gave him the Quran in his head. You know, of course, he couldn't write it down because he was illiterate, right? And uh, you'd think if he was inspired by God with the Quran that God would have been able to overcome Muhammad's illiteracy and help him, uh, you know, put that to paper. But of course, he couldn't do it himself because he wasn't of God and he was illiterate. So, oh, but, but the angel Gabriel, he says, gave him the Quran. Well, you know what? Paul already covered that in Galatians 1. Galatians 1, 8 to be exact. We are to reject any any religion, any so-called gospel that claims to be, you know, even if they claim, oh, an angel gave it to me. Well, angels don't do that, but, you know, a demon that said he was an angel, hey, look, I, be I believe Muhammad saw something in that cave. I believe it was Satan ultimately pulling the strings. One of his, one of his devils. Because let's face it, you don't get to deceive a billion plus people like Islam has done, you know, unless you've got Satan pulling the strings. Okay? That's what I believe. So we already know as Christians, as, as Bible believers, that if someone comes to us claiming they got some revelation, we're supposed to reject that out of hand. Well, the Muslims are not that smart, and they believe Muhammad about, you know, seeing the angel Gabriel, and they follow that guy. Well, you know what? It gets even worse. They're even dumber than that, okay? They eat house flies because Muhammad told them to. Because in the Quran, it says that uh, a house fly has a disease in one wing, and it has the cure in another wing in another wing, and that if that house fly flies into your drink, <laughs> you're supposed to eat it because then you'll get the disease in one wing and then you'll get the cure in the other wing of the house fly and that you'll build immunity through, I, I mean, who could be that stupid? Hello? House flies are filthy. They... They eat excrement. I mean, you ever been on a, a horse farm and you see a horse, you know, take a dump? And and what do the flies do? They buzz all around it. And they eat it. They eat shit. And Muhammad was telling his followers to eat the house flies who... They eat shit. And he's saying that you should eat the flies because that's going to help you not get sick. What in the world? They're actually that dumb. And, and oh, get a load of this. And I'm just scratching the surface here. I, can't, I cannot possibly cover in one video, one sermon, all, all the dumb stuff that the Muslims believe. I mean, I, mean, I can't do it. It's not possible. I'd, I'd be here all night, all day. I, I'd be here all week, okay? Probably even all month. But they believe also that the Quran is supposedly the inspired word of God, word of Allah, which is, is Satan in, re, in all reality. But they say, no, the Quran, you know, it's the word of God, it's the word of Allah, uh, only in Arabic, though. That's the only language you can read it in. Well, you know what? 
that's funny because the Bible, you can read it in any language and it's awesome. And it still has the same power in Greek or in Hebrew as it does in my English King James Bible, okay? Or in any other language for that matter, because God's word is awesome and powerful and it packs the same punch and it's an ineffable experience reading and studying this book no matter what language it's in, okay? But the Quran, they say, well, I mean, they know it's it's just garbage. So they're like, well, you just got to read it in Arabic because, you know, most people don't read Arabic and, and most Muslims don't read the Quran at all, okay? Because it, it just sucks that much. But they, you know, that's their that's their cop out is, well, it's, you know, it's only in Arabic and it's been corrupted and, you know, you can't understand it. You just, just, yeah, that's their, that's their little, uh, uh, cop out that they've established. <clears throat> okay. But they say the Quran is inspired. That's the word of God. Okay. All right. I'll bite. But yet, they say it's the word of God, but yet God, according to them, allowed a goat to eat one of the chapters, to eat a whole chapter of the Quran, and it's never been reproduced. It's just gone. Like, it never, like, in the Bible, if, you know, the, the, the true word of God, you know, like in Jeremiah, you had, you know, uh, they burned one chapter of the Bible, and then what did he do? He wrote it out again, right then and there, right? So God's word has always been there. It's always been preserved. But according to the Muslims, the Quran, which they claim is the word of God, a goat ate it, you know, and God, it's like Allah, you know, their false God. He's up there like, oh yeah, okay, I'm writing the Quran. Oh shit, oh no, a goat's gonna eat it. Oh, oh, oh no, oh. Oh, and then he's like, oh shit, what did I write? You know, oh, come on. So it's never been able to be reproduced after the goat ate it. <laughs> so it's the word of God, but he let a goat eat a whole chapter of it, and it's just never seen the light of day. <laughs> okay. That's stupid. That's a stupid, stupid book and a stupid belief in a false God. Who Muhammad preached. And I'm just scratching the surface. I mean, look, it doesn't take a genius to see just how stupid the Muslims are. I mean, you look over there in these Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq, Iran, etc., and so forth in the Middle East. They can't even build, you know, pool their resources and build a nuke. Okay? They can't even beat Israel... Okay, not because, you know, God is blessing Israel. No, no, no. It's just because they're so stupid. They can't even, they're, they're so uncoordinated. They can't beat, you know, Israel, who are just, frankly, just as wicked as they are, if not worse. I mean, I would say worse in a lot of ways, morally. But they're a lot smarter, too, so, you know. But I mean, the Muslims outnumber them by quite a margin and they still can't beat them. <laughs> they still can't take back that land. <laughs> They're still getting, you know, getting their ass kicked. I mean, I just find that funny. I'm not, I'm not picking a side here. I mean, I like it when they just destroy each other, you know, but, um, because they're both just so wicked, but I digress. Oh, oh, and then, and then they, the Muslims, another thing they do, they, they kill the sodomites. They throw them like off buildings and stuff, but they're into it too. Like they'll sodomize some guy and then throw him off a building for sodomy. It's like, they're into it too though. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad they're fulfilling, you know, God's judgment on that at least, but I mean, they're into it themselves. So Anyway, it just it's stupid. They're stupid. They're dumb dogs. But but get a load of this. So, all right. The Muslims are stupid. They're not intelligent. 
But let me tell you what their greatest achievement is. Well, actually, no. Let me rephrase that. Let me tell you what the greatest achievement of atheism is. Okay? And that's another false religion that I'm going to hit pretty hard right now. Let me tell you what their greatest achievement is. The greatest achievement of atheism is making Muslims appear intelligent by comparison. <laughs> okay? Because what I just described to you about Islam is stupid. They are not a bright bunch at all by any stretch of the imagination. But atheism, atheists are just exponentially stupider. You say, what do you mean? Go to Psalm chapter 14. Psalm number 14 in the Word of God tonight. Psalm number 14, verse 1, the Bible reads, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Now that's some pretty strong language right there. God says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Hey, atheist, Mr. Secular Humanist, whatever, God says you're a fool! And that's something he never said about the Muslims or anybody, you know, a lot of these other false religions. I mean, they are fools, but look, when God, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe... In his infinite wisdom, when he calls you a fool and when he expressly uh, uh, inscribes that in his holy word, that is a serious indictment against you. That's not playing around. He's saying you're a fool if you deny God that there is a God. You're a fool if you embrace atheism and you believe in an explosion that came from nothing. Literally nothing. That's what these people believe. You say, well, how did we get here? Oh, well, you know, I mean, we evolved from, you know, swamp creatures and, and pond scum and stardust and monkeys. That's, that's foolish right there. That's ridiculous on its face. But no, no, no. How did we get here before that? How did the pond... Look, forget all that. Forget evolution. Forget, you know, ooga booga monkey men. Okay? How did we get here before that? And I'm laughing here because it's just so... It's, it's hilarious. It's even more hilarious to me than, than the Muslims' ridiculous... Ridiculously inane and stupid beliefs that are nonsense. But atheism, how much the more? I mean, there's no God, but and we evolved from stardust and pond scum. Okay, Mr. Stardust Pond Scum, how did that get here? Oh, well, you know, chemicals and, you know, lightning struck the pond and created RNA and, you know, that evolved, you know, give it a few million years, you know, give it enough time, you know, it worked. Okay, all right. Not true, but it's not, that's not science. Were you there? Did you test it? Did you observe it? No. Is it observable? Is it testable? No, then it's not science. It's science falsely so-called. That's what the Bible says in First Timothy chapter 6. By the way, that's why I love the King James Bible is because, uh, you know, it'll use phrases like that, science falsely so-called. Well, you won't get that in the modern versions. They call it, you know, knowledge falsely called or whatever. You know, it's like, no, no, no. God knew that there would be a movement one day calling itself science, but really it's just a bunch of foolishness and vain jangling and science falsely so-called. I couldn't have put it better if I tried. But okay, Mr. Atheist, Mr. Ooga Booga Monkey Man. How did planet Earth get here? How did the universe get here? How did the solar system, how did the observable universe 
come into existence. Can you, can you tell me that? Can you form a hypothesis? I mean, I mean, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. That's, that's the laws of physics. How did it get here? Pray tell. Well, you know, there was an explosion. Well, they don't call it an explosion. They call it, you know, I mean, the Big Bang, but the, the, they refer to it as an expansion. I do believe the universe is expanding, by the way. The Bible talks about that, you know, how God uh, stretches out uh, the the heavens as a curtain. I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit there, but uh, in Job, I believe he talks about that and, and elsewhere as well. Isaiah talks about the circle of the earth and uh, so on and so forth. But how did, how did that expansion happen? How did that cosmic expansion happen without God? Can you tell me that? Oh, well, you know, it's just, I mean, there, nothing. But that's what Stephen Hawking said, that fool. He's burning in hell. He says, no, nope, there's no God. It just it just happened. It just expanded because of gravity or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay, so because of gravity, the universe can create itself from nothing. I mean, those were his words. This is one of the, like, high priests of atheism right there. You know, Stephen Hawking saying, oh, yeah, the universe can create itself from nothing. Those were his words that he wrote in his, in his book, The Grand Design was the name of it, if I'm correct. He said, because there are laws such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. I mean, look at what a vast, expanding universe we have just that we can observe. And it all created itself from nothing. Okay, well, how'd it get there? Nothing. Okay, well, well, I mean, how did that happen, though? How did, I mean, that singularity, that expansion, how did it happen? I don't know, nothing. What was there, though? Nothing. Yeah, but, but what was, nothing. And then, here we go. There you go. Just like that. No God, it all came from nothing. Why though? How? Because gravity. Well, I got to do the slow, the slow, you know, idiot thing. Oh, gravity. Oh, it's so clear. Oh, Stephen Hawking, oh, it's so fascinating. No, it's foolish. It's foolish and folly. And the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And that is infinitely more foolish than any false religion out there. Even Islam, which is pretty damn stupid. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. I just wanted to preach for a bit. God bless you all. Have a great night.